Well hello and welcome to my latest video. You're thinking, well we can see a bike and we can see a hand but we can't see his face. What has happened to him? Has he been decapitated like that character in the Northman? Oh sorry, flop spoiler. Um, no, he hasn't been decapitated. He's here. But the reason I'm not in the picture so much is because I'm going to do uh, a video about my bike packing setup because yes, Julian, and I'm going to dip out of the picture again now, um, is going on a bike packing adventure with my mate Mike. And we're going to, sorry, my leg is blocking the view there. Oh, oh he has his leg chopped off. Oh, plot spoiler like that character in The Northman. So what bike am I taking? I am taking the Fairlight Seacan, which is a steel uh, gravel bike, I guess you'd call it. Well, yes, it is a gravel bike. And star of Julian's video, one of his most popular, well, in fact, his most popular by a country mile uh, videos on YouTube, Seven Reasons Not to Buy a Gravel Bike. And if you have not seen that video yet, where have you been? Because a viewership equivalent to the current population of Rwanda, believe it or not, until the rest of the refugees arrive, uh, has seen that video. Anyway, back to the topic in hand. Uh, it's a Fairlight Seacan. It has Hope wheels. I'm not going to go through all the details of the bike because you may have seen that in previous videos. What I want to go through is what are the bags that I've got on the bike and what am I going to be taking in those bags. So we'll get a little bit closer, shall we? Sorry, there's my finger rather waving around in that rather strange fashion. Okay, what I'll do is I'll focus on each of the bags in turn. Then I'll remove the bags and I'll go in the garage and I'll show you what's in the bag. So we're starting off here with a tail fin uh, rack, which is, uh, uh, let me just show you, attached down there to the uh, mudguard stays and also to the uh, seat pillar. Uh, seat pillar, is that what you call that? Uh, the, anyway, the seat thing to me. And okay, so that's the tail fin bag. There is an, uh, can you see that? Apidura uh, rucksack, which I'll show you separately. Moving along, you can see an Apidura frame pack. And just above that, let me move the camera, you can see a Revelate uh, top tube bag. Just to the uh, right of that Revelate bag, you can see an Apidura food pouch. On the frame, you can see a water bottle holder. On the bracket, the bottle bracket underneath the down tube, you can see a tool bottle. And on the uh, down tube, not the down tube, the seat tube, you can see another tool bottle because that will have a spare tube in it. Moving to the front of the bike now, this is a Topeak handlebar bag and the yellow sort of clip that you can see there is a quick release clip that holds the bag onto the handlebars. Uh, you don't quite see it in all its detail, uh, but you will see it when I remove it and show you what's in it. So let's move inside to the garage and I'll show you what I'm taking on this bikepacking trip. And um, you want to know what bikepacking trip it is? Well, it's only for one night. No, 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 Julian's joking again. It's for five nights. And I'm going to France, as I said, so we're going to get the ferry from uh, New Haven to Dieppe. Uh, we're going to cycle for a bit, stay in a hotel, cycle for a bit, uh, stay with Mike's uh, relative, and then cycle back, basically. So uh, we're not camping. I'm a little bit old for camping. Uh, but we're going to be staying in some nice hotels. Hopefully we'll have some nice food. And I'm really looking forward to the trip. Despite, and if you've seen some of my recent videos, you will be aware that I'm currently carrying a litany of injuries. Uh, I have a bursitis on my knee, uh, I have a grazed elbow, and I have some possibly bruised or perhaps cracked ribs. But I'm soldiering on and I'm not letting it get in the way of mine, or indeed Mike's, enjoyment. So, come along, let's go inside. Come along, let's go inside. Do you like that bass relief there? I think that's quite nice. I carved that myself, you'll be pleased to know. There's a, there's a part of my uh, my wall, a little bit of paintwork is lacking there. Uh, we're going to be going into the garage. You're saying this isn't the most interesting part of the video, Julian. And frankly, I would probably agree with you. Well, you can fast forward it if you like. And here we come where the magic happens, as Alexander Kristoff said when he was showing a journalist around his bedroom. 
This is not my bedroom, by the way. This is my garage. Okay, we've come inside and let's start with the tail fin bag. So let me just open this quickly. As you can see, it's got this roll top, which is designed to make it pretty waterproof. Now, what have we got in here? Got a pair of knee warmers, a pair of bib shorts, toilet bag, a um, dry bag, which I'll probably take, another dry bag, which I'll probably take, another pair of bib shorts, a long sleeved base layer, a Rafa short sleeved but it's a, what's called a brevet top, so it's got kind of like a, a gilet front already attached to it. A t-shirt, a gilet, a good start, a Rafa short sleeve jersey, a pair of underpants. A pair of socks, another pair of socks, and a pair of pants to wear at night, and that's it. Um, one of the jerseys, of course, I shall wear uh, once we start cycling, and one of the pairs of bib shorts I shall wear once we start cycling. I've got a separate bag of clothes which I'm preparing that I shall wear because we're driving down to New Haven to get the ferry, so... Sorry about that, my uh, tool chest fell over. So we're driving down to New Haven to get the ferry over to Dieppe. So I shall wear uh, a pair of trousers. Uh, I shall wear a base layer. Uh, I'll probably wear a shirt, but then I shall change on the ship and put on my jersey. Uh, I shall wear my a pair of socks and I shall wear my non-cycling shoes so that on the boat I shall change out of my trousers into my uh, one of the pairs of bib shorts and I shall also put on my cycling shoes. So I hope that's all clear. Now let's look and see what's in the other bag. I only realised by the way that it took me the best part of two and a half hours to put those bloody bags on the bike and now I've had to take them all off just to make this poxy video for you lot and then I'm going to have to put all the bags back on again. So you know I just hope you appreciate the kind of work that goes into it. Anyway, here is the Apertura frame bag, and uh, as you can see, there is a zip on the left side, there is a zip on the right side. So if we look on the, oh, if we look in the zip on the left side, this is uh, a, a little Olympus voice recorder in case I want to uh, record a short story while I'm away. This is a front light for the bike, which I may put on the bike, and here is a bottle of muck off lube because you never know when you go to France are you going to need some lube and then in the right hand pocket this is uh, a, a little packable rain jacket this is a pair of thin arm warmers this is a uh, neckerchief that I shall wear around my neck because it makes me look cool this is a pair of thin gloves I'm not really expecting the weather to be cold enough for gloves uh, and if it is very cold, then these gloves won't be sufficient. So a bit of a balance there. And this is a uh, neck warmer or doubles also as a buff. So that's all the stuff that's in the frame bag. Now looking at the two peak topic, topic, two peak, two peak, whatever you want to call it. This is the front handlebar bag. As you can see, there's a, a pocket here at the front, there's a pocket at the side, there's a pocket at this side, there's a main pocket here, and then there's a zip pocket at the top. So it's got quite a lot of pockets. So if you're a man like I am who digs his pockets, then uh, there you are, you are, you'll be in luck. Uh, there is a tube of zero high five tablets. I'm going to take the whole tube, but well, I might take the whole tube actually as we're going for six days. Uh, and then there is a little lock in there. There is some sun cream, very important. And in that pocket, I will put my uh, microphone for my camera. I have a little mini tripod, again, for my camera. I have my sunglasses in here. I have the, oh, this is a foam cover for my GoPro. This is a Peak Design mount uh, to put my phone on my tripod mount my ID bracelet, which I, which I shall actually be wearing, this cap, which I shall also be wearing, this 
strap, which I don't know what it's doing there. Uh, and this is a plug adapter for going to French France. And here is a printout of my um, um, vaccination certificate. In the top pocket of the bag, I have the strap for this Topeak bag, which enables you to put the bag over your shoulder, which I will probably take as it doesn't weigh very much and it could be quite useful in case I need to hang myself while I'm away. Uh, you shouldn't watch that actually. Kids, take no notice of that. That was a joke in rather poor taste, I might say. And here is a charging cable for my various devices. In the front pocket of the Topeak bag, I have a little anchor power bank. And do I have anything else? No, I don't have anything else. So that's that. What have I missed? Oh, the Revelate top tube bag, which is this. And I really like this. I've made a couple of videos about this where you've seen. It has a magnetic closure, which I think is brilliant, actually. Um, I had, or I've certainly tried, you know, the Topeak and the Apodure um, top tube bags, which have got a zip on it. And I always find that you, you can't undo that zip one-handed. They always say that you can, but you always find out that you can't. Whereas this, you just flip it open like that, and I can take out my GoPro like that. I can put it on the tripod mount and I can start making some uh, wonderful videos for you lot. Incidentally, just while I'm on the subject here, and if I just show you the GoPro here, I have got uh, a kind of metal cage for the GoPro to which you can attach the um, um, media mod which allows you to attach an external microphone but I find it really heavy and quite bulky so what I thought was if I just um, attach the microphone adapter here using a rubber band then uh, I can use the normal um, uh, what do you call it frame cage for the GoPro and that's a much smaller and a much lighter solution and still enables me to use uh, an external microphone, which is certainly important in terms of recording or trying to record decent sound. Um, now, I haven't shown you what's in the uh, Apidua pouch, which you saw mounted to the right of my stem, uh, but basically that, that's just got a few items of food in it, and I may put the um, camera tripod, if I can find it in here, I may just put that in there while I'm cycling along to make it easier to get at. So that's everything that I'm taking on my bike packing trip. Uh, I will, of course, you wouldn't expect anything less, make a video while I'm away. And I'll probably make a video while I come back about uh, what worked and if there were things that didn't work or I wish that I'd taken or wish that I hadn't taken, then I'll probably do that as well. I'll try not to make, by the way, a two hour long video, which I did make, about my Land's End to John O'Groats ride, which is uh, uh, probably too long, if I'm honest, and is in fact only 15 minutes shorter than The Northman, which is a movie I went to see last night, where, when I say last night, I mean Sunday night, uh, with my favourite son, Joel, and which I probably won't do a separate review about, but which I actually rather enjoyed. Well, I sort of enjoyed it. Well, no, I did enjoy it, actually. Now, I'm being a bit churlish there. I'm trying to think of something horrible to say about it, but I can't really think of something. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to do a review. But Joel really enjoyed it. So, there you are. If you want to go and see a decent movie, go and see The Northman. And if you want to hear all about my bikepacking trip, then watch this space. So, thanks for watching, and see you next time.